Welcome back. So we are almost at the end of differentiation on its own. Of course, when we do integration, we will still do a bit of differentiation here and there, but differentiation as such. We are about to finish. In the last lesson, I derived this formula. I also showed you the graphs of sine inverse x and sine x, the definition, the domain, the range. So today I want to spend some time trying to do questions involving inverse trig function. The first part is some questions on inverse trig functions. For example, I don't know whether I should do this. I don't think I should because it's okay. Just I'll do one. Show that tan inverse half plus tan inverse one third ah you see I forgot to turn on my watch. Oh, there. Tan inverse half plus tan inverse one third equals pi over four. Of course, immediately what would you do? Take the calculator, find tan inverse half, find tan inverse one third, add the two, you get a decimal, do pi over four. And they look similar even up to 10 decimal places. So you say, oh yeah, that's what they are. Then your marks would be zero. It has to be exactly equal to, you can't use approximations. But what is an inverse function? It's an angle A, that's an angle B. So you know, you have to show A plus B is pi over 4, right? In other words, you know, tan inverse half is a that gives you tan a equals half. Tan inverse one third equals b that gives you tan b equals one over three. Look, if you know sine, use sine. If you know cos, use cos. If you know tan, use tan. So I need to show a plus b. I have tan. So what is tan of a plus b formula? Tan of a plus b is tan a plus tan b over 1 minus tan a tan b. I know what is tan a half. Tan b one third over 1 minus 1 six. It is 5 over 6 over 5 over 6 which is 1. So, a plus b is tan inverse of 1, which is pi over 4. Sir, but why can't it be 5 pi by 4? Because tan is positive even in the third quadrant. But remember, it's an inverse function. So, it is defined only between minus pi over 2 and plus pi over 2. So, you must consider the angle only between minus pi over 2 and plus pi over 2. That's how it comes to pi over 4. Yeah? Good. That was just, uh, this is a standard question actually. So I want to go into differentiation now. Let's do some basic differentiation before you take up some interesting questions. All right? Differentiate with respect to x. Okay? Find dy by dx. I think that's better. When let's look at part a. Y equal to arc sine two x. I would prefer arc or sine. I will mix up arc and sine inverse. So you get used to both. Sine inverse x gives you root of one over root of one minus x squared. So sine inverse two x gives you 1 over square root of 1 minus 4x squared because when you square 2x, you get 4x squared. But, onion rule, there are two functions, there is an arc sign, there is a 2x. What you have done is you have differentiated only arc sign, so differentiate 2x, you get a 2. So, you put a 2 there. So, 2 over root 1 minus 4x squared. Let's look at part B. Arc 
cos x the whole square y equal to arc cos x the whole square. How many functions are there? There is a square and an arc cos x. So, differentiate any square gives you two times the same thing. That takes care of the square. R cos x gives you minus 1 over root of 1 minus x square. So, it is minus 2 R cos x over root 1 minus x square. Ah, what C? y equal to x squared arc sin x. There are two functions now, u and v. So, what is dy by dx? u is x squared, derivative of arc sin is 1 over root 1 minus x squared plus v is arc sin x, derivative of the other one is 1. You can leave the answer there, you do not have to do anything else. So, that is how you differentiate. Let me see, I have a couple of more questions. I have done part C, eh? remember. Now, part D. Mm -hmm. Part D is tan of arc tan 2x equals y. Well, blindly. Tan gives you 6 squared, so 6 squared arc tan x times arc tan x gives you 1 over 1 plus x squared, so 6 squared arc tan x over 1 plus x squared. Perfectly all right, but I tell you always use the God given gift. Tan of tan inverse is like f of f inverse. What is f of f inverse x? x. So, this is basically y equals to x. So, therefore, dy by dx equals 2. So, don't blindly do it. Stop and think for a minute what things could be. You know, you might have seen that suddenly I think what I have written is different now. Yeah? Well, something funny happened. Uh, yesterday, when I was recording this lesson, I realized that uh, the air conditioner was not on. So, I tried to turn it on and me being a brilliant uh, expert in electronics and electric uh, uh, electronics, I just decided to turn it on and just dropped it down without realizing that I had uh, disturbed the microphone. So, a part of this 2A went into oblivion. Didn't exactly into oblivion. It was, you know, you couldn't hear me talking. You would hear only a static buzz. So, I have to do it again. So, you, know, you can see the shirt is different. I look different a bit. Not much, a bit. That's because of that. So, I will just do 2A. And you know, we have got our experts. They will take this, delete the one which I had done before and insert this there. I don't know what I would have done without them. So, let's do it. Given that, as usual, my pens don't work. Ah. Given that, no, both pens don't work. Maybe the third pen will work u equal to, oh yes, u equal to x root 9 minus x squared and v equal to arc sin x over 3. So, I am correct. Find <coughs> du by dx and dv by dx, simplifying your answer. Okay. So, that is u and v. So, du by dx equal to 
u is x. When you differentiate 9 minus x squared root, I get half of 9 minus x squared power minus half, that takes care of the root, and that itself gives you minus 2x. So it is minus x squared, oops, sorry, plus v is root 9 minus x squared du by dx is 1. This can be simplified as minus x squared over root 9 minus x squared plus root 9 minus x squared. I can simplify this further. So, it becomes uh, root 9 minus x squared is the LCM. I get minus x squared plus root, oops, plus 9 minus x squared. So, it is 9 minus 2x squared over root 9 minus x squared. Mm. I hope it's correct. Yeah, yeah, x root 9 minus x squared. Okay, and then let me just do v here. v is equal to arc sine x over 3. So, dv by dx equal to r gives you 1 over square root 1 minus x squared over 9 times 1 over 3. Let's simplify that a bit. Root of 9 minus x squared over 9 times 1 over 3, which is 1 over root 9 minus x squared over 3 times 1 over 3. 3 and 3 will cancel. You get 1 over root 9 minus x squared. For the sake of completeness, I will write the answer here. So, du by dx equal to, I am still not happy with this. I wonder why. No, that is perfectly all right. u dv by dx plus v du by dx. Right. So, du by dx is 9 minus 2x squared over root 1, 9 minus x squared and dv by dx is 1 over root 9 minus x squared. And of course, you are asked to do part b, which you will be able to do on your own. Okay. I am sorry. We will rejoin my yesterday's lesson after this. Okay. Right. Part b, given further. that p du by dx, sorry, a, yeah, p du by dx plus q dv by dx is equal to root 9 minus x squared, find the value of p and the value of q. That means, you are expected to get only one value, I will put an equivalent sign there. P, I do know, du by dx is 9 minus 2x squared over root 9 minus x squared plus q times 1 over root 9 minus x squared is identical to root 9 minus x squared. Of course, in the exam, they will mention x not equal to 3. Okay. Multiply the bit root minus x, 9 minus x squared. What do you get? P times 9 minus 2 x squared plus Q equals 9 minus x squared. Open the brackets. 9P plus Q minus 2P x squared equal to 9 minus x squared. Compare coefficients. Minus 2P equals minus 1. So, p is half. 9p plus q equal to 9. 9 over 2 plus q equal to 9. So, q is also equal to 9 over 2. So, that is how you find the h. In fact, they adjusted the function sin inverse and uh, the x over 3 and 9 minus x squared so that you are able to compare coefficients. All right. I think that has taken up 13 minutes, so I should be able to do one more question. Okay. I think I will just 
finish this particular topic. I got only two more questions to do. I will wrap this up because I expect you to have copied this. So let's look at number four. Show that d over dx. No, 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 no. I think I'll do this. I'll take the next one because it's going to be long in the next lesson. Find d by dx of sine inverse x plus cos inverse x and explain your answer. In, in terms of trigonometric functions, very interesting. Yeah, what is sine inverse x given? One over root one minus x squared plus minus one over root one minus x squared. So the answer is zero. How are you explaining this in terms of trigonometric functions? Of course, otherwise, if they didn't say this, you would say, sir, one is positive one over root one minus x squared, the other one is negative one over root one minus x squared. So they cancel each other. That's a brilliant law argument, but no, I want a trigonometric argument. So for a moment, let's call sine inverse x as a so do you agree sine a equals x let's assume uh, 0 uh, less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1 ok similarly cos inverse x is an angle I'm calling it as b so cos b equals x if I were to draw a right angle triangle, if this is the angle A, we realize that is x, that is 1, I am sorry, that is 1, that is sin A. Now, if I were to draw another triangle, if this is B, that is x, that is 1. What is the relation between A and B? Can you take that B and fit it in A? Don't you think I could put B there? That is B, that is A, that is X, that is 1. Doesn't that satisfy both cos B equal to X and sin A is equal to X? So what do you conclude from there? A plus B is pi over 2. Remember, for any given value x, sin inverse x plus cos inverse x is pi over 2 as long as the domain or the range is between 0 and pi over 2 or the domain is between 0 and 1, not minus 1 and 1. Okay. So, therefore, what is d by dx of a, a plus b? 0 because pi over 2 is a constant. That is how you explain it geometrically. Okay, or trigonometric functions. Not that's positive, that's negative, so they cancel each other. Even your mark will cancel and you get a zero for the second part. All right. So I'll stop at that and I will do a couple of questions in the next lesson. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye bye. Hello. I want to take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks. I would like to thank Vivid Innovations Private Limited and Commerce Forum for uh, so generously giving up their uh, studio and the facilities and the services of their uh, technicians to record all these videos for free. I think that needs to be acknowledged and appreciated. Thank you very much. And my special thanks to Mr. Nitin Mahadevapa, Mr. Nishant Guruswami, and Mr. Sadan Kumar DN for all their help and assistance in getting these videos ready, uploaded, and launched. 
थैंक यू वेरी मच